welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Ricardo Rambaran, I am a 3D artist, and today's quick tutorial will show you how to set up lights in UDK. This tutorial is intended for anyone who is not familiar with Unreal, and they want to get started with either lighting up a scene or a prop. So the first thing I did was I set up a small scene here to demonstrate exactly what the lights will do. Since UDK uses approximately three different lights, each of them have a different functionality. So the first step is to get into the lights. To get there, you click on the content browser, you click on actor classes, and then you will see there's a drop down menu that says lights. When you expand them, you'll see that there are a few options. So to give you a brief rundown of each of the options before I start applying them to the scene, uh, so that at least you understand the theory behind them. It's a little bit easier to apply them afterwards. You have directional light, point light, skylight, and spotlight. So the directional light is, in another way, you can say it, it's like the sun. Uh, you never want to have more than one in the scene since only the first one or only the, the last one you put will actually have an effect on your, on your scene. Uh, it'll cast the exact same shadows in the entire scene. The second one is the point light, and this is the one you'll generally use the most in either lighting a scene or a prop. It's the one that has the orbit around it and the one that people tend to light most of the scenes and games with too. Uh, you have the skylight, that's the one to, to light the sky if you have skybox. And you have the spotlight. This one here is exactly what you would think it is. It's a spotlight with a, a direct beam. So I will show you them in more detail as we move forward. So the first one I'll, I'll put into my scene is the directional light. So how I apply them to my scene, there's a few ways. You drop down here, and then you'll see it has a few options for the directional light. But they all have those options, so once I explain it the first time, uh, it'll stay true for the rest. You have your main directional light, you have toggleable, you have lit, or uh, dominant, sorry, and you have directional light movable. So. Essentially what that means is the first one is what you think it is. It's just the light. There's no options. There's no kismet There's nothing to add on to that Toggleable means that it has some kind of interaction where it can turn on and off with a kismet function Dominant means if you put this in the scene, it will be the only light that will light in the orbit and Finally you have movable which exactly what you think it means. It means the light can move So let's drop this into my scene here and as you can see, as soon as I dropped it in, my scene started to actually take the lighting. But this is real-time lighting. We have to bake the lighting after. And I'll show you how to do that after. So I'll try to move around the light. And you can see there's nothing really happening here. You don't see any effects in real-time. So what I'll do is I'll just hit the space bar, get into the rotate. And you can see there's a blue arrow on the front of the bulb and as I rotate that you can see that's where the shadows well that's where the lights actually coming from so it doesn't matter where my light is placed since it is the Sun it's taking the role of the Sun it's just here as a visual indicator of where it is so you can have this anywhere in your scene and it will have the exact same effect so you can see I, I can move it around and I can get whatever effect I want the thing about the directional light is that it does overpower a lot of the shadows and it makes everything very soft. So I don't like starting with this light right away. What I do like starting with is the point light. So I'll go back into the content browser. I will find the point light. I will click on point light. And now the other way to apply it to the scene, if you didn't notice the first time what I did, I just simply dragged it from the content browser into the scene directly. What you can also do is you can highlight it here, right click, and click add point light here. It does exactly the same thing. So as you can see, the point light has this orbit around it, and that's exactly where you think the light will hit. And the way this light works is the light is coming off of the actual bulb, if you will. So anything in the way will block the light and anything touching will be lit by it. Unlike the sun or the direction light, if you will, everything was getting an even coat of lighting. So much like any other prop, you can hit spacebar, move it around, hit spacebar again, you can rotate. The rotate doesn't have that much functionality with this light. 
And finally you have the scale, which changes the radius of the light. So that's one of the lights you can use to really light up a scene to give yourself a base to work with. As you can see, it, it, it casts shadows. Unlike the directional where it was casting even shadows amongst everything, it was it's a little bit harder to get this effect. But like I mentioned before, these shadows are actually viewport shadows. So the way to make it real time, or the way to actually render these lights and bake it into your scene, is by simply putting your light wherever you want, and then going up here. Now the thing about UDK and their lights is that you need to build geometry and lights if ever you, you're you working with BSPs. If you're working with your own custom meshes, you can build light, lighting only. And finally, there is build all, which is build the geometry and the lighting in one calculation. So in this case, I'm just going to do build all. It will generate whatever calculations it needs to, and it'll apply that to the scene. So that's where you'll see the, the shadows built in. That's where you'll see if there's any uh, bugs or anything that you're missing in your light maps. So let's see what we have. So as you can see, I baked in the lights, and that's exactly what you get. You get the shadows, uh, you get the lighting, everything's baked in. But if you remember, when I click and I move, you'll see the shadows are much crisper here. You'll see they're, they're much darker. So you always need to bake your lights in UDK uh, to see what is the actual effect you're having on the scene. It's not always true to look at the viewport and to assume that that will be the results. So let me just bake it one more time. And the next set of lights that I'm going to show you is finally it's a spotlight and it's exactly what you think it's going to be. It has uh, the same properties as any spotlight in real life. So back into my actor classes, I have my spotlights here and I will take this one Put it in the scene. So as you can see the difference between the spot and the point, the point really just has this radius around it, whereas the spot, it has a radius also, but more importantly it has this cone. And this is the cone where the light is actually shining from. So if I put it over an object, you'll see that the effect is exactly what you assume it would be. It's a spotlight, so if I try to light something like point light, it won't give me the same effect, but I have more control of it if I wanted more effects like a spotlight. So now the other thing I want to show you is getting into the properties of the lights. Because right now all we did was just put lights in the scene and we didn't control their brightness, their color, uh, or their radius. So one way to get into the properties is you can either right click your light and go into spotlight properties or point light properties and here you're going to have an entire list and I, I'll, I won't go through the whole list I'll just highlight the important ones to kind of give you a, a running start and from there you'll be able to play with it. So the other way to get into the properties is by clicking on your light and then hitting F4. It does the exact same thing. So here we have for the spotlight we have the inner cone, the outer cone so this changes exactly what you think it changes the size of the, the cone. You're going to also be playing with the radius, which is another way of scaling. There's the brightness, which does exactly what you think it does. You also have the color. Sometimes you'll want to put color in your lights. So as you can see, the, the cone changed size. So as a result, my light is stopping where the radius stops. So if I expand that radius, the cone will continue down and it will continue lighting. So that's one of the little nuances with the spotlight is that your spotlight will actually stop wherever your radius stops. It's a similar idea to the point light, except the point light is really just trying to give off light in 360 degrees. So it's the same idea. You hit F4, you can go in and play with the options. And like I said, the most important ones generally in the beginning are the brightness, the color, 
and to some degree you can play with the radius here if you were looking for more of a of a precise number. The other thing you want to keep in mind with all the lights is that you're trying to again minimize the calculations because if you're building a bigger scene it can take longer to render so what you want to try to do is you want to try to avoid intersecting orbits so in my case it should be fine because my spotlight and my point light are not are not intersecting so this is easier on the computer it's easier on the on the engine to compute now obviously as you get more and more complicated scenes there may be instances where lights need to cross over but you're trying to minimize that just to accelerate the the computation process and it also if you're building for a game you're trying to limit the resources that it's taken on the engine so that concludes the small tutorial here on lighting in UDK thank you for watching 3dmotive.com and stay tuned for more great tutorials.